Hello students, this is our lecture on exception handling in Java. So uh, exception handling is one of the very very important concept in programming language that allows us to uh, continue the execution of our program with the help of which or with the help of exception handling we can execute the instruction that we have written in our program and if there is anything wrong it will not disrupt the execution of remaining instruction in our program so we'll discuss these are the uh, we'll discuss this content under this chapter so these are the list of content uh, uh, that we have under this chapter and out of this we are going to cover a few of them like uh, uh, this lecture covers only about basic things about the uh, fundamentals of exception handling syntax and all examples except some of the exception types okay and we will talk about the syntax of try catch block multiple class block and the user defined function the, re uh, the remaining topic will be discussed in the next subsequent lecture so what is a uh, error okay so uh, what is an error so errors are something that makes program go wrong okay? errors are something that makes program go wrong now go wrong in the sense that uh, the program may give you either an incorrect output or terminate the program abnormally okay terminate the program abnormally i repeat what is an error an error is something wrong that exists in your program that you have written it and that makes the program go wrong now go wrong means either it will give you an incorrect output or the program gets terminated abnormally for example suppose Suppose there is a class called demo, okay, and inside the class you have got p psvm public static void main, and inside we have a string args which I'm not going to write it, and inside the psvm we have got main executable instructions like int a comma a equals to um, ten, okay, and b equals to five. b equals to 5 and c equals to 6 so these are the three variables that we have okay uh, that we have declared now i'll write a very very simple statement that will calculate x so int x equals to a divided by b minus c right a divided by b minus c and you'll have the display of x okay so we are trying to um, evaluate some um, formula that is this okay with some values of a b and c respectively with 10 5 and 6 into the variable a b and c respectively so when the computer or uh, compiles this program when the computer compiles this program it will compile it by is by giving the command java c okay demo dot java i am assuming that the um, name of the program is saved in the demo dot java okay now when this statement gets executed or when this command gets executed the compiler will generate a class file name is demo dot class okay? because demo dot class why uh, name of the class is demo because it is the main class which contains the it is the class which contains the main program now you give the executable instruction so you give the executable instruction java demo name of the class now once you give this instruction okay once you give this instruction it will give you an error and name of the error is like uh, something like arithmetic exception so some wrong thing had happened during the execution okay so during the execution some wrong thing related to accepts arithmetic operation has been encountered that leads to that leads to generation of this message and 
it will not execute this SOP instruction. So, so uh, when an exception is encountered by the computer system, okay, the remaining code will not get executed. For example, in this case, our exception has been encountered in this area because a divided by b minus c. b minus c, okay. Uh, I am assuming that the value of c is 5, okay, the value of c is 5, so I am assuming the value of c is 5, so now when the value of a is 10, b is 5 and c is 5, then this statement will lead to divide by 0 situation and anything divided by 0 is something indefinite and is kind of an arithmetic problem or error. And due to this, due to this, uh, SOP statement will not get executed. So this kind of error is known as a runtime error. Okay. Now suppose instead of this, uh, you have missed the semicolon. You have missed the semicolon, right? You have missed the semicolon. You have forgotten to uh, specify the semicolon. And this kind of error is known as a compile time error, syntax error or compile time error. So the error detected during the compilation means from .java to class file. Whenever you convert from this .java file to class file, the error encountered in this duration is known as a compile time error, and the error encountered during the execution of the program is known as a um, is known as a uh, <coughs> runtime error. So there are two different kind of error. One is compile time error, and other one is runtime error. So, uh, just to brief you what we have discussed. So, errors are something that makes program go wrong. Now, the program may go wrong in two different directions. Either there may be an uh, incorrect output or the, term or the program gets terminated abnormally. Abnormally means the rest of the code will not get executed. Whenever, whenever an error is encountered, there itself the program starts um, terminating. Okay, the rest of the instruction from that statement onwards will not get executed. That kind of error is that kind of uh, error is known as a uh, um, compile time error and lead to an abnormal termination of the program. So there are two different kinds of error: compile time error, generally called as syntax related error, is uh, caught uh, while compiling the program or while transforming the uh, high level program into the machine code. And runtime error are the end, uh, are the errors that are encountered uh, during the execution of the program after successfully creation of the class file, and then you give the execution command, and during the execution of the machine code, uh, the program gets uh, terminated abnormally. Some of the common examples of the runtime error are like divide by zero, the example that I have shown you just now. It's shown over here also. Okay, the same examples. So you can see in this example. Uh, suppose the value of b is 5 and the value of c is 5. So this uh, evaluation of arithmetic expression leads to a uh, divide by 0 uh, situation. Divide by 0 situation. Now since it is a divide by 0 situation, so error has been encountered, runtime error has been encountered at this line. So rest of the statement will not get executed and the program terminates abnormally. Right. So, uh, the other examples could be like x, uh, array accessing the array element out of bound. You are trying to uh, re retrieve the uh, element of an array uh, by specifying some index but the index is very very far from the limit of the array. So these are the basic things about the error, types of error okay, and most important the runtime error. So now coming to the point exception. Since we are uh, our main uh, theme of the uh, chapter is exception handling so we need to understand what is an exception. Exceptions are basically the runtime errors. Okay? Exceptions are basically the runtime errors that exist in the program, and due to the encounterment of the exception, it leads to a uh, abnormal termination of the program. So when an exception is encountered, what will happen? The remaining share or the rest of the code will not get executed. So for example, in a program, there are four lines of four code, four statements. I am assuming there are four lines of code in a program. Suppose an error has encountered or an exception has been encountered 
here somewhere in the step number two or statement number two then statement statement number three and four will not get executed at all irrespective whether it is correct or not so this is something uh, something like um, that we don't want during the execution of our program so due to one statement due to error due to erroneous in one statement or due to error in one statement why other remaining code has to suffer okay or why other remaining code uh, should not be executed it should be executed so that can be accomplished only when we write the program in such a way that it handles the exceptions okay so if you want to continue the program execution with remaining code then we should uh, we should catch the expression thrown by the erroneous statement and display the appropriate message to the users for the corrective actions so uh, it will be uh, now what is the uh, what is the main objective of studying this exception handling the main objective of studying studying this uh, exception handling is to make the normal flow of the program and to make our program robust and very very efficient so that now so that it caters all kind of need it caters or it handles all different kind of situations based on the input values so uh, the main advantage of the exception handling is to make our uh, uh, to design our efficient program so that so that whenever an error if whenever an error is caught in a particular statement it should not have impact on the remaining statement so basically the main advantage is to maintain the normal flow of the program or the applications so while writing the java uh, exception handling programs we will be using the series of keywords so most of the uh, 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 five keywords that uh, we will be using these five keywords to uh, perform the or to write down the uh, exception handling program in java so those keywords are try catch throw throws and finally so we will see one after another about each of them okay. so try means uh, if you want to uh, analyze a particular statement suppose you are sus you are suspicious about statement number 2 suppose you are suspicious about statement number 2 then you can monitor this statement number 2 by placing this or writing this statement number 2 under try block so if you want to monitor any statement you keep it in the try block now when an error is encountered in a statement that you have kept in the try block i repeat when an error is or when an exception is encountered when an exception is encountered by the statement that you have kept in try block then what will happen an object will be created an object will be created uh, that will have the message of what kind of error it is and that mer that error is caught using the catch block. So to catch the thrown ex uh, exception thrown by the try block, okay, and handled rationally. So catch block is used to catch the exception that the try block has encountered. Now throws and throws are related with uh, throwing the exceptions manually okay so most of the time in java everything is done on um, the exception handling handling can be done automatically also but if you want to uh, manually throw the exception that that is also possible uh, using the throw and throws keyword so the uh, throws will cover it up in next upcoming lecture and finally keyword uh, finally keyword are the is, uh, are the block uh, finally block uh, is the block where you keep the statement that you have to execute that you have to execute irrespective of exception or not so mandate if you want uh, if you think that say for example statement number three is mandatory statement in the program it has to be executed irrespective of the exception or not then you, you have to keep such kind of a statement in the final block so statement that must be executed after try block are kept in the final block so this is a general syntax of the exception handling program as discussed already just now that uh, whatever whichever statement whichever statement that you want to uh, monitor or analyze okay or you're suspicious about it you keep that statement under the try block okay and when when this statement generates uh, is uh, encounters exception when this statement encounters exception then an object is created okay an object is thrown or created after creation will be thrown so with the help of the exception object creator the exception will be created 
uh, that highlights the what kind of uh, exception that it has encountered and that will be thrown and will be caught in the catch block and the catch block will handle this kind of exception by displaying the um, proper message to the user. So uh, this is all about the exception uh, basic concept of the uh, try catch block uh, which uh, which uh, is a pictorial pictorial representation okay so we'll see go further for with the help of the example suppose uh, Suppose uh, you are suspicious about a particular statement that in the program and that suspicious statement is something like this int x equals to a divided by um, b minus c. You are suspicious about this statement because you might think you might have it might have came into your mind that okay b and c in this execution of this statement totally depends on the uh, the proper execution of this statement totally depends on the value of b and c because if the value of b and c is same then and then it will generate a, a, a runtime error or the, it will encounter etc so if you're suspicious about such kind of a statement you keep the, such kind of a statement in the try block try try block so now now, uh, <coughs> I'm assuming that this is B and C have the value 5 and 5. Now, if the value of B and C is 5 and 5, right, uh, then it will generate an error and that error has to be caught into the catch block. Okay. Now, there are, there are a lot of exceptions that we can have it. So, uh, I'll write the generalized one, exception E. Okay, then you can have some statement like SOP statement, SOP, SOP statement, and you display E. Okay, or E dot get. Okay, you will able to understand what is get message later on. So this is very very simple uh, demonstration of try catch block. So if B and C encounter some problem. In the try block, an object is created, object will be thrown in the cat block. So that object is E. Now, with the help of this object, you will invoke the proper message from proper location and the user will be notified accordingly. Right? So this is all about the uh, example of try catch block. So uh, instead of uh, e.get message, you can have your own uh, statement also, like uh, as shown over here, divide by zero error. Okay, so uh, now coming to the point, different types of uh, exception. So these are the not the exhaustive list. These are the some of the common list that we can have the exception. So some of the common exceptions are arithmetic exceptions. Whenever there is, whenever the computer system while executing program code encounters arithmetic error like divide by zero, then it will throw arithmetic exception error. Or exception it might happen that some sometimes you are trying to refer the array element and by specifying the index and you have specified the index very very far from the limit of an array maybe less than zero or greater than value of n or upper limit of an array then it will generate array index out of bound exception sometimes uh, you are trying to store a uh, character array into the integer array fine so incompatible data type so array store exception or sometimes you are trying to uh, retrieve a file which does not exist at all then you'll find uh, the file not found exception okay and i exceptions are exception that are caught using the io activities so all these exceptions are stored in the java.lang okay under lang package i repeat under lang package all the exceptions are defined. So the proper example of try catch block is this. So there is a class error three, okay, and there is a main program. There are three variables a, b, and c within five and five respectively, and x and y respectively, as 
the output variables a b c are the input variables x and y are the output variables where we will be storing the result now suppose uh, you want to perform uh, some calculations okay so x formula you are going to use it as x equals to a divided by b minus c and y formula you are going to use it as a divided by b plus c now it is very very obvious that uh, whatever may be the value of a b and c it is not going to create any kind of error or runtime error okay but however in this expression uh, if b and uh, b and c are different values then it will not create any kind of exception but if b and c are same then it may okay if b and c are different then it will not create any kind of error but if b and c are mm, having the same value then it may it will create a uh, error okay arithmetic uh, exception error or uh, divide by zero so this is a suspicious statement so you keep such kind of a statement in the try block okay and if there is different value for b oh, very good okay x will have some value and this catch block will not get executed but if b and c is having the same value then arithmetic exception will be caught by the try block object will be created object will be thrown as e to the arithmetic exception class and which will display some message right so this is all about the try block okay. now if you see the execution of the statement so uh, first uh, first initialization will be done resolving of the memory will be done then try block will be executed since b and c is having the 5 5 value okay b and c is having the 5 5 value so uh, exceptions is caught out here and you will see some message divide by 0 okay then after that then after that y equals to a divided by b plus will get executed and y will, will also get printed now the this is the effect of uh, exception handling program you have seen that although there was some problem with this statement and it has been called still the rest of the statement was executed this two statement was executed so this is possible only when you write on the program in in this way in this uh, uh, in this exception handling way okay so that's the, this is the advantage of uh, exception handling program right now in this example you have seen only one catch block suppose you are not sure about uh, different kind of uh, exception so say for example this might uh, this might this statement might encounter exception arithmetic exceptions or array out of bound or any other any other okay if you are not sure about what are the different uh, or if you are sure about the possibility variety of exception that it might encounter then you can have multiple catch block so uh, e1 is the uh, exception pertaining to one uh, uh, exception may be arithmetic uh, expression uh, arithmetic calculations and uh, e2 may be array out of box of an May, another may be file or another may be io so you can have multiple catch block okay so for multiple catch block you can see example there is a uh, int a equals to 0 and b equals to 42 by a okay, divided by a so you might encounter uh, this uh, arithmetic exception okay some this uh, divide by zero situation or any other situations okay so you can have multiple uh, number of catch okay based on the situations or uh, based on your assumptions uh, if you are sure that okay these are the list of exception that you might encounter then you can list several uh, uh, different different catch next is the final block now final block is just basically used in a situation where you want the code has to be executed mandatorily after the try block so this is the syntax okay this is the syntax where you put the suspicious statement or the monitor statement that you want to monitor in the try block list of catch and block and the block of code executable code that you want to execute properly okay after the try block ends so we put that kind of code in the finally block now this is the last topic under today's lecture user defined exception uh, user defined exception is very very important user defined exception is very very important because you are trying to extend the, uh, you are trying to customize the message that is given by the um, that is given by the uh, that has to be given by the program let us consider a scenario suppose uh, you have written this program and you have tried to execute this program now uh, when you try to execute after compilation of this program you try to execute this program when you execute this program it will generate this kind of error. 
ओके जावा डॉट लैंग डॉट एरिथमेटिक एक्सेप्शन कोलन डिवाइड बाय जीरो एट एरर टू मीन ओके सो हियर द मैसेज इज जेनरेटेड ऑटोमेटिकली नाउ यू वांट टू कस्टमाइज दिस मैसेज ऑफ योर ओन लैंग्वेज इन योर ओन लैंग्वेज देन दैट इज पॉसिबल इन व्हेन यू राइट डाउन द यूज डिफाइन exceptions okay so how do i uh, write down the user defined exception there is something called exception class inside the lang folder there is something called uh, exception class in the lang folder that you need to extend it or that you need to derive it okay and create another class after deriving the after deriving the uh, you have to derive a exception class and inside the derived class you have to mention uh, some informations okay or you have to customize your message so that's that's the basic principle of uh, uh, how to create a user defined exception so you user defined exception can be created by except by by extending or by deriving the exception class now where is that exception class located exception class is located in this hierarchy so this hierarchy is in there is a package called lang okay under package you have object and you have a throwable class inside throwable class you will find uh, exception class as well now this exception class has to be extended this exception class throwable i re rewritten the same thing over here there is something called throwable class that uh, exists under the lang package so this under this throwable class okay the exception class is the derived class of the throwable class i repeat exception class is the derived class of the throwable class which means that um, throwable class is the parent class and exception class is child class now furthermore to have a user defined function you have to extend this or um, derive this exception class in the my exception okay so like this you can create the user defined exception you will understand more if you see the examples the syntax is throw new throwable subclass so again syntax also you will understand better if you see the example so uh, as i told you just now that there is something called throwable class okay there is something called throwable so let us see the content of throwable so the content of throwable is something here okay so there is a string a message there is a string msg now this block is known as a constructor that will initialize this msg whatever it receives in the parameter is a kind of a parameterized constructor then after that Uh, there is a method okay there is a method uh, which can be accessed from anywhere else in the program because it has been declared as public and it will return a, merit, a message so whatever this whatever this constructor whatever this constructor initializes this instance variable of throwable class that it will return it okay. so this is the content of throwable that is this now let us check on what is the content of exception no the content of the exception is there is only one parameterized constructor again it will further receive it so basically uh, exception class will receive some message from somewhere else maybe on an object exception uh, class will receive a message okay in the constructor that uh, that message is thrown to here so from here the message will go to string msg of throwable constructor which will further initialize the instance variable so this message gets initialized from exception to throwable okay so let us try to see how uh, how can we do it okay or how can we create it so whatever you see this this already exists in the system so how do we modify the content of uh, msg okay. so say for example uh, as i told you that uh, to create the user defined function you have to extend or derive the exception class let us derive the exception class so my class my class my exception extend exception so this exception is already existing you are deriving this class you are deriving this class okay so you have derived this class now inside which you have a constructor now I am assuming you will get some message, some string over here in this here, and you will create or you will invoke the super uh, message. Now, when you invoke or when the computer system or when the processor execute the super message, okay, super MSG, super is the keyword that is used to initialize the super class reference variable. Okay, so super, when you super, when you super, when you uh, execute this, whatever message is received here, 
that will be passed on to uh, this location again this will pass on to this location and further at the end uh, the message will be initialized in instance variable of throwable okay so now main class okay my class so there is a main class so where there are some variables and you have checked 10 is less than 20 yes true so throw is a keyword new my exception so you have invoked the class you have invoked the class okay by or you have created the object of this class my exception by supplying some string so x is less than wrong will get initialized in this msg of a string of my exception variable which will further throw or will will further pass on this string onto exception and this exception will further pass on the same message to string of throwable and further throwable will initialize the instance variable msg instance variable okay so at the end when this statement gets executed when this statement gets executed okay if this condition is true, this statement gets executed and when this statement gets executed an object will be created while creating the object you will try to initialize the string from here to this message from this message to exception message okay and from exception message to throwable message from throwable message to msg of uh, instance variable of throwable okay now at the end of that statement msg contains what x is less than this string msg contains x is less than y is wrong okay this string is now initialized in this msg of throwable class okay now you know that inside throwable class you have a get message so if you uh, try to access this it will return that same string so it's done same out here okay if try block is executed properly an encounterment of exception very true that object will be thrown out here in the catch block in the form of the e now e is the name of the object that has been created and with the help of which uh, this uh, string has been initialized in the msg of throwable class then using e dot get message you are trying to retrieve this message from throwable class so that's how you can uh, customize your own message okay? the another examples could be my exception exchange exception so you have a message over here okay so this is very very common so the most important statement is here how do you invoke this class okay so using the throw new my exception so with the help of the new you all know that we can create the object so this statements creates the object because if you see our basic syntax also okay, exception object creator so try block so try block will create the object so try block will create the object based on this value of the true if this condition is true the uh, this statement will create the object now while creating the object you we'll try to initialize the msg of throwable through my exception and then to exception and then to throwable so like that it will go then when you try to display the message using e dot get message the same message will get displayed on the output screen so that's how we can have the own message okay so that's all for today i hope we had made it, uh, uh, we had made it clear so just to brief you uh, what we have done in today's session uh, we have understood the basic concept of the error and different types of error and uh, we have understood what is an exception what happens when an exception is encountered different types of uh, common examples exception some keywords used to write down the exception handling program and advantage of exception handling program so this is the syntax we have understood example okay these are the examples and at, we have seen we have also seen that we can have multiple catch and the uses of finally block and we have seen how to create the use defined function by extending the uh, exception class which falls under the throwable class and everything falls under the lang okay your throwable class exception class and all exception uh, exception uh, like uh, common exceptions falls under the lang
packets. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please do post.